Very respectable. Yes, this appears to be KT's go-to map. They've pulled out some sneaky wins against multiple teams with this. So uh, I am looking forward to seeing if they can do it again this time. A uh, quick question to you for the sake of me making future puns. Are there any witches in Heroes of the Storm? There's Witch Doctor, but I don't count it. Um, I mean, Savannah's is not a witch per se. Yeah, She's a Banshee Queen. Banshee. I don't think there's a real witch. There's no Magda from Diablo, for example, in there. True. Okay, I'll save that for when Magda is released, then save that part. <laughs> there aren't actually that many witches in the Blizzard universes, are there? No. Like, like I said, there is Witch Doctor, which True. is kind of, kind of like A Zebo, uh, you know. And a Zebo would be the closest yeah. thing to a witch, but obviously he's not a female. Yeah, so, yeah, there we go. We, we have found out. I mean, Valor kind of has a skin that looks sort of witch-like, like the Vampire Hunter one, but... Hmm. No, still no. And she's also banned. Also, Stitch is banned. That respect, though. Yeah, there's a lot of respect coming into the Stitches of Butcher, and I'm really happy to see that the teams are basically following up on what we tell the viewers out there, not making us look like uh, imposters who are only trying to act smart. <laughs> so, I mean, that's definitely true sometimes, but a good caster, like, a good caster should be like a good teacher, you know? If you don't know what you're talking about, make it look or make it sound that good, nobody's going to notice it. Are you, are you encouraging teachers to just wing it no, <laughs> and just make up facts in no, so teaching? We all know those pupils, <laughs> like we all know those students who keep nagging you with those really annoying questions just to basically look good in class, right? And you just sometimes need to make up something on the spot. Like if they ask you, what is the size of Jupiter? Like you're, you're saying like 50,000 square kilometers. And although that's not true, some of those little students will probably be like, okay, you know, that teacher actually knows his stuff. Teachers aren't infallible, though, and that should not be promoted that they are. I mean, the biggest mistake to undermine your own authority would be like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know, ah, oh, let me just look that one up, you caught me, haha. <laughs> well, well, why would you know that? It's a silly <laughs> thing, it's just like, you know what, I don't know that, but because I love learning like you should, I'm gonna Google it. Because you all have access to smartphones, I know you're all playing with them under your desks right now, there's nothing <laughs> I can do about it, so just Google it. <laughs> Done! No longer will people have to uh, commit to studies in order to become teachers, they just ask us, man. <laughs> We're the best teachers. So, <laughs> Lunara Tassadar, really solid opening here for KT. Rip UI, by the way, that's vanished. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tassadar Lunara now being deployed. We see the Greyman and the Rhaegar following suit here. We see a classic double support comp on the side of uh, the one on the left-hand side, although we just lost our UI, as Tetris said. So, the cool thing about this one is now that the one actually didn't commit the beginner's mistake, as I want to call it, that many other Chinese teams uh, committed many times in the past. They didn't pick Uther. They went for heavy AoE healing. Now, can you imagine, Tetra, how much healing there is available with Ariel and Rhaegar against that AoE damage from Lunara? I'm not so sure if this draft is going to bode well for Kudos Top. Yeah, Kudos Top needs some follow-up damage for this. A Chromie, I think, would be a spectacular follow-up to what they've picked so far. They have Lunara for the uh, just standard AoE consistent damage, keeping Ariel on her toes, keeping Greymane potentially a little bit further back, and then you put extra pressure on with a Chromie or something like that, which could also help protect the Lunara if their Greymane does decide to go for an all-in style. Very true, very true. There could be plenty of options left. Yeah, or Cal like, like, and speaking of uh, speaking of Butcher and getting outbanned or outpicked here, like they're sh <laughs> shutting down a lot of warriors. Which hero would you like to see him on now? That heroes like ETC, I, I'm Stitches are banned out. I'm checking his stats now, so I can give you like some more information on what his hmm. current picks. Are. I wouldn't uh, mind seeing him on the Anubarak and the Arthas because if my memory doesn't cheat on me, I think those are his, you know, heroes that he's next successful um, on. Arthur's is his second most. He hasn't actually played ETC that much and also hasn't won on it. Uh, his next most successful hero is Muradin. Gotcha. Uh, with 42%. Stitches, he has a 69.2% win rate. Wow. Uh, Muradin, 42.9. Arthur's and Anub are both 20%-ish. Okay. My memory cheated on me then. <laughs> I know he, but he's I, played... The, they're still the ones he's played the most. I was like going to say. 13, I was going to say, 10, yeah. He definitely nine. played them the most. Yeah. He has a 0% win rate on all but four tanks. 
And he's uh, five, he has five tanks with a 0% win rate on. Tyriel, ETC, Dahaka, Johanna, and Diablo. Yeah, what happened to uh, Johanna? If I recall correctly, uh, there yeah. were a couple of Johanna bans in the European Open Division yesterday, weren't there? Uh, yeah, there was a couple Johanna bans over someone like Muradin, even with the changes. Because hmm. uh, I believe we are in the patch where Johanna has been reworked, right? Uh, no, that one is going to go live with the new patch with Anna. So, uh, okay. the Johanna rework is not live just yet, but it's going to be amazing. Like, people yeah. told me that Johanna basically got transformed into a bruiser now, with the Falling Sword dealing terrible amounts of damage. Ooh, and like she lost a little bit of her tanking capabilities, though. That's, that's what I heard from most people thus far. Okay, I'm down with it. So, we have Malfael coming in for Katie. A pretty good response, actually. Very little CC currently yeah. on the board. Uh, each Stitch is banned out, one of the biggest heroes to actually counteract him. So, and he has the healing reduction, which is going to massively affect both Ariel and Rhaegar here. So, really nice pick here for KT. Yeah, really nice pick indeed. Just going to confirm how large Jupiter is, in fact, because <laughs> we're now arguing over how big <laughs> countries are. And if Jupiter is indeed close to uh, 50,000 square kilometers, I'm just going to... It's, Drop the microphone. It's very but relative I, due to the fact that Jupiter is a gas giant anyway. Yeah, so I guess he can expand it, and shrink a little bit, right? Probably. And there's also the whole thing of it having a... But it's not going to have a huge amount of a... Uh, it's going to have a fairly high volume, but not very high mass. Be a, it's going to be a weird one. Yeah. Either way, uh, both drafts were locked in now. Yep. And uh, Ketcha, who would you give sway to? Which draft convinced you more? Well, with an Illidan and a Tyriel to finish up. The Tyriel, great counter to the Malthael. It's just solid. There's nothing really <laughs> wrong with this. The one draft, we got Hugo on Illidan. We have double healing protection. Greymane's a good enough hope generator for Ariel, and if not, Rhaegar's on the board. This is a the one draft that I have to lead towards. All right. By the way, shout out to... Uh Crager, 1978. Stitches is a gas giant as well. That's <laughs> very well said. <laughs> ah, well very well played. said. There we go. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not going to see everyone's favorite gas giant in this game because he was banned. Sad times. Sad times. Uh, no gas giant and no gas low either, so we're not going to see him. Still sad. It's it's always in the last week where we end up seeing heroes like that. Yeah. SBT, I wonder if they'd be willing to like bring out the gas low again against CE. To be honest, can't, CE can't overtake them. I think That's next the week when CE is going to face SPT, it's going to be a gong show. Like, both teams are going to just have fun I, and enjoy I themselves. So. I yeah. said raw. I mean, like I said, it's impossible for CE to overtake. CE are on 20, uh, 24 points now, whereas Super nothing to lose. are on 29. It's not possible for them to overtake them. So why don't they just have fun with it and try and tie their drafts? But now, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into game number one of the one versus KT. Right, ladies and gentlemen, sporting on the left-hand side, it is the one. Hugo Illidan, Lucky on Tyriel, Meng on the Grey Maid, Zyran on Ariel, and he <laughs> on the Rhaegar. Their opponents in the red trunks, we have Kudos Top, aka KT, with t Die on the Tassadar. Malthiel is being played by Neptune, Genjo on Uther, Seeing on Lunara, and Butcher plays Arthas. In the meantime, you can tell me what your latency is, because I think I need to uh, refresh. <laughs> It is eight. Let me see what I've got. Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting at six here, so I'm gonna try to refresh once more. Maybe if you can... can get to seven, then I think that would be perfect. Because I, like I said, I keep lagging a yeah. lot, so I have to refresh fairly constantly. I think we're good for now. It's probably gonna bounce between uh, seven and eight now, so we should be fine. That will do. Here we go. Neat. He says as he lags up to seven. So down to seven. <laughs> How'd that happen? Either way, I'll, I'll take it. I'm on seven now. So cool. We do have KT putting a little bit of early game pressure onto the one. And this will happen for quite a while. Lunara will just bully early on due to the very low amount of lockdown from the one. In fact, they have zero stunts. Yeah. Very true. And zero stunts no. means, of course... No, Dead. he's not going to make it. He, he, what? Oh. 
so Rhaegar, close. Rhaegar, help! Yeah, oh. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Rhaegar had a chain heal ready or not, but it looked like it was on cooldown, or he was just barely out of range. But this yeah, early death, I think death that was the idea. Give Rhaegar yeah. a chance to escape and wrap round to get in heal range. Mm -hmm. It's a cool idea. Exactly, definitely true. But as you said, there's no stuns available, and we've seen those stunless compositions with Aterial as the only frontliner struggle a little bit in the past, but uh, I think the one is a team that can pull it off, and if they manage to pull it off, then of course the sanctification provided by um, Aterial is going to be more than enough protection for Hugo to just go ham on the backline. In the meantime, though, we also have a couple of really good counter Illidan heroes, you know, not to mention the... Arthas, the Uther, you could even go Divine Storm to have additional crowd control, so whereas the one is lacking stuns and slows, KT has plenty of them. Yeah, KT are very uh, decent in terms of the CC here. The one looking for a sort of snowball team fight, just murder everything style. Yep. They do have like, oh, I, I stand corrected, they do have a stun, I forgot about Attainment Strike. Uh, so yeah, they True. do have a piece of CC. They can go for another in the form of the Judgment if they wanted, or the Hunt, and of course they have the slow from the Totem. So for the one, it is of the utmost importance to not fall behind tremendously in the early game because when you have a high aggression, momentum-based composition with Illidan, Greymane, Turiel, if you're all of a sudden finding yourselves two levels behind, your damage is never going to be enough to really threaten anyone, especially not against a double support comp like KT has. So it is really important to not overstay their welcome, to not overextend. As long as they maintain an equal level, that's going to be just fine for them. That is the idea. We do see the Mana Regen Lightning Shield coming in from Rhaegar here. A Detainment Strike Talon for Ariel that I can't remember the name of. Uh, which one is it? It's the, uh... It is the red one. Uh, heavy Burden is the slow. Here we go. Heavy Burden is the slow and repeated offense is, of course, the stacking one with the additional yeah. damage. So we have the slow coming in from the Heavy Burden. Once Ariel knocks a target against the wall, that target is also going to be slowed for another three seconds, which is nice. Which is really good at keeping heroes like Arthas or Uther at bay from the Illidan. Even Malthale, like if he gets stalled and uh, slowed, that could be huge to really cripple his advance. Hugo finally backing up from his assault onto the top lane. Kala's light, by the way, from Tassadar, considering that no one is really going to benefit from Life Leech. Mount Lael is just uh, single auto attacks to get his mark on. And Lunara is just, once again, single auto attacks to get the poison. Yeah, it's really important uh, to keep in mind about those Siege Giants here in Tomb of the Spider Queen. Oftentimes, uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen is labeled as the map where mercenary camps matter the least, simply due to the fact that you can normally always outpush them or just easily defend against them. However, there's a big tactical finesse aspect about those uh, bottom Siege Giants. Once you unlock them, you're drawing a lot of attention to those Siege Giants from the enemy team, right? In that moment, you can basically rotate top, turn your gems in the turn in point, and get lots of value this way. So don't underestimate uh, the importance of Siege Giant camps, even on Tomb of Spider Queen. Yeah, they can get some really solid value, and like you said, it's one of the most underrated camps we currently yeah. have in the game at this point. Even for bosses as well, like if the Siege Giant camp is being defended by more than two, or just by, say, at, at least two enemy heroes, then that is basically your go-to ticket to really start the boss, because it's ta it's taking them quite a while to rotate all the way from bottom to top. But as we speak, the first Web Beaver wave has been unlocked for pretty Kudos good. Top, and uh, they're actually doing a pretty good job pushing in in general. Like, it doesn't seem to me that the one is really the aggressing the, uh, the offensive team by any means. They're getting pushed in quite heavily, so... Uh, Kudos to top. Uh, let me just double check on my latency here. Unfortunately, it today's really stream seems to be very unstable. Oh, you're lagging as well. It's not yeah. being here. It's it's okay. really a frustrating yeah. today, guys. So we apologize. Spikes. So we're okay. gonna have to refresh again. It's I'm actually a very fresh. exciting moment in the game as well. So we're just gonna keep it up for now. Could you yeah. say that with more emotion? <laughs> it's, it's really frustrating. Fight. No, I meant like this is a really exciting moment in oh. the game. As, well. <laughs> <laughs> as we do see KT pushing in, I am on eight. By the way, we see KT pushing in, putting some pressure onto the mid lane. But here comes the reaction from the one trying to force him back. Arthur's just missing that route. Yeah, Lucky's completely out of mana, and uh, Aterial without mana normally spells bad news, because he won't be able to slow down anyone, he won't be able to provide any shields to his allies, so uh, you really need to make sure that you always manage your mana very wisely on a mana-hungry hero like Aterial. Now, in the meantime, Illidan joining the fray, gets slowed, gets stunned in the meantime, but takes respectively low damage, though. He's still in good shape overall. 
Eats a little bit of poison at the end, but a nice heal from Ariel completely changes that. Again, Ariel, by the way, going for the reduced cooldown and cost of her heal if she is able to pick up globes. The Glimmering Hope, I believe that's called. That is very true. Yep, there we go. Perfect. And of course, on a map like Tomb of the Spider Queen, you can really go for that talent because due to uh, the short range or the the short distance between each lane, you're normally going to pick up a lot of gems. Uh, excuse me, gems as well, but uh, region globes constantly here. So I don't mind this decision too, too much. Me personally, I'm not a big fan. I normally like the Energized Cord or the Empathic Link a little bit more, but it's still a decent talent. Against Lunar as well, Emphatic Link's actually really reasonable, but I also almost always prefer the Energized Cord. Exactly. Energized Cord is very reliable, keeps your hope meter recently, uh, decently high, even if your main battery is not doing too, too well. In the meantime, though, the one, they're desperately trying to pay in themselves. In the meantime, Meng gets caught. He's carrying 20 gems. He must not fall. He gets out of harm's way in the nick of time, so really nice stun as well by Zyron, just to make sure. But I think they might yeah, get good. another... No, they don't have enough just yet. Yeah, they're trying to get there. They're very close. They're creeping their way there. And they do have level 10s as well, though. Divine Shield, Army of the Dead, Leaping Strike, the Archon, and the Torment Souls. Here we go. Now we have a very scary com uh, combo yeah, with that Divine Shield, Torment of Souls. And uh, the countermeasures, the Tyrion Sanctification, is not ready just yet. Also, which Rick ability is Hugo going to go for in that Illidan? Is he going for the mobility with the hunt? Or is he going for raw team fighting power, making him a little bit more resilient thanks to the metamorphosis? Metamorphosis. Nice, Zero I like that. CC heroics. They stick with the just pure team fight potential. And here's Ooh. them attempting to use it. They Sanctification, picking off Uther. Trying to turn around to get some play onto Butcher here, but he is too tanky. And they are not able to get their turn in because guess what? Sneaky Malthael was able to turn it in the top lane. I think that's the reason why Uther didn't want to use his Divine Shield as well because he wanted to save it for the incoming Webweaver push. So they realized Malthael was going to get that turn in no matter what, and Uther would be ready again in time to really support the Webweaver. So smart call and good heroic ability cooldown management here on the side of KT. Well played. Yeah, KT, even though they were able to lose a hit, they lost a hero to that team fight there, which only really burns Sank on the side of the one, yeah. so that wasn't too bad for them either. But that crisis management from Malthael prevented capitalization on that kill. In the meantime, they're pushing top lane really hard with those web weavers. Then keep in mind on Tomb of Spider Queen, the top lane is a very important one. If you manage to destroy buildings, the boss is going to threaten the core directly or maybe just the keep, depending on how much progress you were able to achieve. As it is though, top fort gets destroyed. Look at the middle fort. It's almost dead. All it needs is one more tickle beam charge of Tassar, it feels like, and it's going to fall here. Ecturial carrying 27 gems here as well. Needs to be careful not to get caught off guard. Nessa Shiro does pull back, does not want to get caught out. With that fort down and mid fort almost certainly doomed to the uh, similar yep. fate, that was a relatively successful second turn in wave by KT. Yeah, for the first time, they were able to uh, set themselves apart quite heavily in terms of overall XP. Shocking those buildings, Genshu, well, that is always <laughs> cool to see. No structure is safe from the holy light. One bat, one holy lightning, and one spear is all it took to take <laughs> down that building. Do you actually think uh, people live inside those forts? Like, is there people living inside, inside those? There, there's a lot of cogs and clockwork inside them, but they do have doors, so yeah. it's an excellent question. I assume the doors are for maintenance. I'm going to assume no. Yeah, it would be kind of vicious if uh, people actually <laughs> lived in those things My during home. the game. <laughs> <laughs> I never I even thought about, about this, right? They are like they, these ones are like tombs, right? They're like obelisks. Mm. All right, I could totally see people living in those Dragonshire buildings, though. There's a lot of people actually standing on the sides watching these back tackle. So, uh, meantime, it is time for the one to pay, but they're getting shut down all the time. Look at Meng, 40 gems, but Neptune says, "Uh, uh, not in my house." <laughs> 123 gems in total available for the one. I think the moment they, they reach level 13, so they're bad. really gonna try to brute force their way in. They really are gonna have to, because at this point they are just playing so passively, just desperately trying to wait for something to happen, as ever so slowly, KT yeah. creep their way towards <laughs> another turn in. Okay, they're about now. to hit 49. Equal talents. We saw Cleanse go down by Rhaegar as well. I'm not oh, sure if that was needed, but sometimes you just need to be safe, rather be safe than sorry. Oh, maybe worse than that. Good heal Meg coming in. Siren, keep it. He's in trouble. 
There we go. Zyrad will also get out relatively fine. They lose a lot of health, but there was a fountain available. Hugo was attempting to sneak a turn in while that was happening, but T-Die, two on point here. Too much on point split. indeed. Uh, in the meantime, we see a cleanse on Arthas to go down. The Iceborne Firetude is not picked here, by the way, at level 7. He went for the Immortal Coil because, because there's uh, hardly yeah. any crowd control available for the one anyway. And speaking of hardly oh, anything yeah, left here, Ariel using the Sank. Ariel just rushing straight out of the sack to make sure he can get in range of Hugo here. And they are just getting wrecked here. Ancestral does wow. land through the Aegis here. So they're still alive. Great made into the back line. Tries to kill off 43 the gems. Oh, Defined shield. Six mo. Protects her. The gems go down. And yeah, the one are having severe difficulties in this game. They can't set a foot onto this game, Tetra. They're just getting shoved and... Knocked against the walls, left and right by KT. They're the ones dictating the pace here, and the one can make use of their aggression. Now Hugo going in as well, only managing to use the friend of foe to get to safety. He's carrying 40 more gems. Uh -oh. Now, don't get me wrong here, Hey Hey still has 13 as well. They do have more than enough gems to actually pay, but when are they going to pay if they're losing those team fights over and over again? And when they're going to pay if the opponent has already paid in us, because at this point, yeah. KT can get yet another turn in, and that's exactly what they are now doing. Not going to start a boss or anything like that. It's not worth the risk. They're just going to get more web weavers and just burn down the one. One web weaver at a time. And with a couple of easy structures left available on the map, I think 16 is very easy to achieve for KT. Look at the bottom for it. That one is going to inevitably get pushed in. Now we see them making a stand here in the middle as well. Butcher being that menace that always threatens the enemy team, no matter if it's Illidan, Turiel, or even Regard. Nobody can really get yeah. close to them. They're untouchable, Tetra. It's about to get worse, though, as he just finished his level 4 Frozen Wastes as well. So he's going to have even more slowing and attack speed slow output to annoy Illidan. Illidan, in fact, has remained largely unimpactful, and normally Hugo is always yeah. the one person that makes all the difference. You Man. can also see the straight-up comparison between Meng, the KDA, the damage done. Look at 16k on the Greymane, that's nothing! C Inc. is dominating this game. He's being protected. He's yeah. getting his output. You can see the split spear there grabbing three members thanks to that extra range that he took at level 16. C Inc. is dominating this game as this keep is beginning to be dropped. Sag oh, is available. Tyrion goes in here. Does not sag. He's very patient. Where we were going down low. here. He's too low, and that has been the bane of Teriel's existence here in that game. He's always poked down too, too low before he can even go for those crazy sank plays. Illidan also not having the pressure. Nice cleanse on Grammy. Takes the purple goo from the bottom. Webfever, though, damaging him even more. And the one they need to defend, but they lose the middle key, Tetra. With the keep down, their defense is now a lot harder. They would love to get this perfect combo, but once again, they've given the burden of execution. They put the burden of execution on themselves. They have a combo that needs everything to work to activate, and they're not being able to get it to. KT is denying it. They're dropping yeah. Tyrael too low, so he has to sank himself because he's not there for the fight. Here might be an okay spot if they fight in the choke point and they're able to zone Arthur somehow. But they decide against Meng's it. Meng slowed. being forced back. He's getting slowed so much, wow. gets rooted. Ancestral burn, that's got to feel terrible. Yeah, if you have to use uh, a long cooldown like the Ancestral Healing simply because Greymin was caught out of position, then that always feels really terrible. And look at Kudos top, they immediately shift their attention towards the top lane. They realize, hey, one of the most pivotal, one of the most crucial cooldowns is now active for the one we can go for that boss. And the one they're not even trying, in the meantime, Tassadar is trying to fight the world here, just <laughs> trying to delay the turn. And can we actually take a look there? Yeah, t -Dai doing a great job with those double storms. He's denying three members from turning <laughs> in. Lucky will finally get it. That's going to be the one's first turn in. But it's going to have to be used here to defend against the boss that is heading in to attempt to achieve KT's second keep of the game. They're going to five-man push with this. Yeah, the only lane right now that may be pressured by that web weaver turn is the bottom lane for the one. The top lane, well, oh, they're going to have to defend themselves. The, the middle lane is still pretty far away from the middle fort as well. So KT, despite the web weavers are pushing against them, they're the ones turning on the aggression. Webweaver gets deleted. It spawns inside the boss stun area. That is not a good place oh, for it yeah. to be. These storms, fully stacked, are causing so much mayhem for the one as they're desperately trying to defend. Cleanse having to be used on Greymane to get him out of danger. Lucky's far forward. So much percentage damage. Do they attempt the sack play? They move in. 
Zank goes down, the Divine Shield is good as well though, and look at those blue health bars, they all drop so rapidly, Turiel once again falling. Now, could this be the turn round though? Meng no I'm longer in the game, it all is on Hugo, gets reduced, Ancestral Healing, that's no bueno, and I think KT are now going to put the nail in the coffin, beautiful Howling Blast, Ariel is no more, Lunara pops all over the map, <laughs> but he is going to be able to finish the game. Hugo, no miraculous one versus four, one versus five this time around. The KT, the underdog coming into this series, taking game number one in spectacular fashion. KT, they really did this as well. The one may be fighting for BlizzCon, but KT are still fighting for survival here. There's only a two-point difference between them and Hot's Lady, but with this win, it will become at minimum a three-point difference, meaning Hot's Lady will have to win their next game just to tie. Oh. That is a huge deal for the one. That is... Uh, sorry, for KT. Yeah, that is a huge deal for KT, but it's an even bigger deal, I feel, for the one. They had... The golden opportunity to overtake their rivals BTG today who failed to get a single point against SBT and if you take a look at the paper uh, on if you take a look on paper here guys KT should be no match for the one but yet thanks to a wonky draft at best thanks to falling victim to the comfort zone that is to most battle queen for KT they fell short and they can only get one point max out of the series making it even more exciting for tomorrow to find out whether BTG or the one are gonna make it. And guess what, Tetra? Tomorrow's not gonna get any much any easier. Who are they gonna face uh who are they gonna face tomorrow? Uh the one have to play against Soa tomorrow, which is still a bit more, I would argue, a rougher Beautiful. opponent than KT, but then again, mm -hmm. KT ha also did 1-1 versus SPT. They are on the tear of their lives at this point, so well played by KT. No take it away from them. But like you said, BTG, they have to play Hot Slady tomorrow. That is potentially an easier matchup than Soa. It's very much down to this. The one, if they get one point, the one point doesn't matter here. I don't think if they if they win or they yeah. lose here. Okay, so if they... No, the thing is, if they play they a tie 16, today. If they win again, they get to 19. Yeah. Yes, so if they get a tie, they can 